Hi everyone, welcome to Things Lucy Reads. I'm Luce and this is another recent releases book haul. I am going to include in this video two books that I should have included in the previous video but that I forgot about until I consulted my list after I'd already filmed, which is always the way. So, the first book that I'm going to talk about is Enola Holmes and the Black Barouche, which is the seventh in the Enola Holmes series. I have been reading this series for as long as I've had a booktube channel. I absolutely adore it. You probably are more familiar with it now because a movie just came out with Millie Bobby Brown and Henry Cavill. It's great. I really love this series and I was very excited to find that Nancy Springer was writing a seventh volume and I hope it's just as fun as all of the others. And this cover absolutely does not match the other books that I own because they match this little sticky here but um, I'm not mad about it because this cover is just gorgeous so I don't mind that it doesn't match. Um, it's also uh, quite a lot thicker than any of the other books in the series which is exciting so I am keen to see what adventures Enola gets up to next and I don't know if there will be any more books in this series but I sort of hope that there will be because it was just so good so good i love it and then the next book is a clash of steel by cb lee which arrived two months before the advertised release date which was weird but i won't question it this is a retelling of treasure island and it's part of a series which is remixing classics there's one already out by bethany c morrow i think which is a retelling of little women and there's another one coming out which is a retelling of wuthering heights by i can't remember who but i'll put it on the screen and it's interesting because those covers both have like photos of people on them whereas this is an illustration i don't know why they don't match but i'm not mad about it because i like this cover um, i'm pretty sure that this is queer as well I'm just really excited. I read Treasure Island for the first time a few years ago after being completely obsessed with the show Black Sails and I thought it was a really fun time and I'm just really excited to have it be remixed with women and queer people and Asian people at the centre instead of a bunch of crusty old white men. So I'm very excited for this one too. And then the next book I'm going to talk about is The Perks of Loving a Wallflower by Erica Ridley. This is the second in a series called Wild Winchesters maybe? I haven't read the first one but it's not gay so I'm less interested in it than this one. I haven't heard very much about Erica Ridley as an author but I have also haven't heard any bad things just like on book twitter in general so that bodes well. I am very excited for a lesbian historical romance. We'll always take more of these and I'm very happy that it exists. And I also don't really know what this is about but I don't I don't really need to know. It's a FF historical romance novel and those are literally the only things you need to tell me about a book. And the next book I originally pre-ordered from Mighty Ape just to see what they were like with pre-orders but for some reason their release date got pushed back twice and I think the first time it got pushed back it had been pushed back everywhere and then the second time it was only Mighty Ape so this, it was supposed to come out mid-October and then it was pushed back to the 6th of November which was when it did come out and then for some reason Mighty Ape said it wasn't going to be released until the 22nd of November, which made absolutely no sense. So I cancelled my pre-order with Mighty Ape and I got it elsewhere. And the book is Laura Olympus, Volume 1 by Rachel Smythe. This is a retelling of just Greek myths in general, I think, but I think it focuses specifically on Hades and Persephone. I think so. Let me read it out to you. It says... Scandalous gossip, wild parties, and forbidden love. Witness what the gods do after dark in this stylish and contemporary reimagining of one of mythology's best-known stories from creator Rachel Smythe. Persephone, young goddess of spring, is new to Olympus. Her mother, Demeter, has raised her in the mortal realm, but after Persephone promises to train as a sacred virgin, she is allowed to live in the in the fast-moving, glamorous world of the gods. When her roommate Artemis takes her to a party, her entire life changes. She ends up meeting Hades and feels an immediate spark with the charming yet misunderstood ruler of the underworld. Now Persephone must navigate the confusing politics and relationships that rule Olympus, while also figuring out her own place and her own power. So this series was nominated for an Eisner. It's been sort of popular on the corner of booktube that I'm in at the moment, but I have never actually read it for myself, but I have seen like snippets of it on Instagram and other places, and it just looks like so much fun, and I am really excited to get into it and to see what all the hype is about. If you can hear something happening in the background, that's my dad's alarm going off, and he's not even here, so... Don't know what the point is of that. And then the last book in this video I can't really talk about very much because it's 
part of a series but it is Die Volume 4 by Kieran Gillen and Stephanie Harns. I've been reading this over the last few years as it's been coming out and I've been absolutely adoring it. It's about these teenagers who in the 80s play a tabletop roleplay game with their friend except it becomes a portal fantasy and they become physically transported into that world and eventually they make their way out again but their friend the DM doesn't and then in modern times once they're all grown up they get sucked back into the game and they have to essentially save it again and um, grapple with the people they've become versus the people who they were when they played the game the first time and therefore the people who they have to be inside of the game and it's just a really fascinating look at not only the characters but portal fantasy as a whole and it incorporates references to a lot of things like Lord of the Rings and the Chronicles of Narnia and um, the Bronte siblings and the secret world that they created it's really complex but so tightly woven and so clever and I just absolutely adore it so I'm really excited to see where the story goes from here so that's all I have for this video. From my current crop of pre-orders there should be enough for maybe one or two more videos and then next year we'll see how things go. I imagine that the book shortage will last for quite a while so I might keep pre-ordering things and therefore keep doing these videos. If you've already had a chance to read any of these books and you would like to let me know what you've thought of them feel free to do that. If you just want to let me know that you are here drop me any emoji that you want in the comments below. Otherwise that's all I have for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in my next one. Bye for now.